Hello, I'm Samantha Cristoforetti on the International Space Station for the Futura mission. Space is a very hostile environment that presents us with many challenges. Vacuum, temperature extremes, radiation, just to name a few. Fortunately, the space station provides us with an environment in which we can live and thrive. In terms of vacuum, of course, the pressure hull, the pressurized modules, provide us with an atmospheric pressure in which we can live and breathe. Temperature extremes are managed by a pretty complex thermal regulation system. The most simple element of this system is the multi-layer insulation that covers all of our modules on the outside. And as far as radiation is concerned, of course the 9 mm thickness of our pressure hull helps in protecting us from radiation, but the main defense comes from the Earth's magnetic system. Being a human being in space, though, presents more challenges, especially in terms of consumables. As human beings, we need a constant supply of oxygen and a balanced atmosphere. We need constant access to nutritious food, to clean water, and a safe and clean waste disposal system. Here on the ISS, we rely partly on resupply vehicles for oxygen, and partly we actually produce our own by hydrolysis of water. In terms of food, we are completely relying on resupply from Earth. And as far as water is concerned, we actually recycle the condensate from the atmosphere and the urine, so that we are only in small part dependent on resupply. But what happens if human beings want to travel further into deep space, far away from Earth, where we cannot rely on a constant resupply? Many scientists on Earth are working today to develop the technologies ca that can reduce our reliance on resupply vehicles. Hello, Natalie. Current systems here on ISS extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by chemical reaction. What kind of technology are you working on in your lab that you think will be a major improvement and will help in future space exploration? Hello, Samantha. Here on Earth, we are investigating how actually bacteria can produce the oxygen for us. We are studying, for example, this green bacteria, which, which is called spirulina. Uh, you see it has a nice green culture or color in culture. If we magnify it, it looks like a spiral. That's why we call it also spirulina. And we are testing how we can use it also in space to produce oxygen and actually to remove the CO2 from the atmosphere in uh, ISS, for example. That is very interesting. And what are the greatest challenges that you are facing in setting up this system on ISS? So we know that the spirulina works very well on Earth. It nicely grows, it's producing a lot of oxygen, but of course we want to know if it does the same in space, where it will be exposed to higher doses of radiation coming from the sun, but also the weightlessness. And this may change the cells or how they grow, so we want to test if it still grows well and if it still produces all the oxygen we want or we need. A lot of interesting challenges for you and your team of scientists. So, what are the current challenges of your project? So, we are studying actually the cells and also the DNA of spirulina, also called arthrospira, to look what kind of genes are in there and if they may change when we expose the bacterium to flight conditions like weightlessness or radiation. Actually, we already exposed spirulina to different types and different doses of radiation and luckily we see that it resists quite well. So, actually, it's a perfect candidate to fly to space. Next to that, we're trying to investigate how spirulina could use actually the CO2 that we breathe out and to convert it back to oxygen. So we uh, give the bacterium this kind of culture medium, the liquid, and we add the bacterium and then we try to blow into the bag to give the bacterium or the, the CO2 which it can use and then it would produce oxygen. So actually the bubble here on top of the culture, it's all pure oxygen which then can be used by us or by the astronauts. Uh, next to that, we are also preparing a flight experiment, which we call Artemis. In fact, we are trying to culture spirulina for multiple generations and see how well it behaves and how well it still grows and produces oxygen. And hopefully we can prove that it works as efficient in space as on ground. 
Really fascinating. Looking forward to seeing your work on the ISS. Gilles and Francesco are also involved in the Melissa project. Very nice meeting, both of you. Can you please tell me what will happen after Artemis? Hello, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Yes, the next step will be to operate an animal in a confined environment without no buffer of gas, like in the further uh, Artemis experiments. Here you have two compartments, the cage, which is here, which contains rats, and the photoboreactor, which is adapted to the oxygen consumption by the rat. The main problem of such an experiment is really to control the activity of the photoboreactor to the activity of the rat, which may vary from time to time from the, with the activity of the rat. And the next step will be to transport this experiment to space condition. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, we are learning a lot from these uh, experiments at laboratory scale and under space conditions. Uh, and then from there, we will need to uh, end up with uh, full systems that will be able to support uh, life in a space, not to a group of animals, but to uh, humans. And this is the effort that the complete Melissa Consortium is doing in trying to reach such a fascinating final goal. This is really interesting science. And I think this will be a great step in finding better ways to support human life in space. I have one last question for Melissa's project coordinator, Christophe Lasseur. Spirulina is just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? There are other issues related to food and recycling technologies. Can you tell me a little bit more about these other technologies that Melissa is working on? Of course, as you have seen, we use spirulina in order to produce oxygen from CO2. We can as well use spirulina at a limited percentage to produce, for example, pasta. But as soon as we want to produce a large quantity of food, we are moving to higher plants, such as lettuce, tomatoes, salt bean, wheat, and we will be able to produce food, oxygen, as well as water. So in fact, the final objective is to create an artificial ecosystem to sustain the crew life during the mission. In fact, I have some spirulina in uh, these muesli bars that I took to space with me. Because spirulina not only has a great potential as a recycling microorganism, but it's also highly nutritious and can be very delicious. Thank you all for your hard work in this field of research. I hope that the technologies you are developing will in the future not only support space travel, but find good use in earthbound recycling systems. And I hope that many young people will be inspired by your work and will choose careers in science and engineering so that they can further develop these technologies to support human life in space and on Earth. Goodbye from the International Space Station.